Look, him, that's a bit bright. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the United Stand. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been sacked as Manchester United manager. It's official. It's just come out in the last few minutes. Um, not very slow. It's literally happened about three minutes ago, so swivel on that. Uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer sacked as Manchester United manager. But ultimately, yes, a little bit of a, an aggressive and uh, frustrated uh, Goldbridge this morning because I'm not happy. I'm not happy with the bullshit. I'm really not happy. Solskjaer going tick. What they've released as a statement, absolute joke of a football club. Can we please get something together as a fan base united to remove Ed Woodward and the Glazers from this football club? Because it's a bloody embarrassment what they've put out as an official statement. Let me just read it to you because it, it sounds good. And then it's, it's shit. Basically, Manchester United announced that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has left role as manager. Ole will always be a legend at United and it is with great regret that we've reached this difficult decision. Whilst the past few weeks have been disappointing, they should not obscure all the work he's done over the past three years to rebuild the foundations for long-term success. Bollocks. Uh, we're in a worse position than we were three years ago. Anyway, but this is this is the bad bit. Ollie leaves our sincere, with our sincerest thanks for his tireless efforts as manager, blah, blah, blah. His place, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Michael Carrick will now take charge of the team for forthcoming games while the club looks to appoint an interim manager to the end of the season. <laughs> Fucking joke. Absolute joke. What is going on? You know what? These Manchester United groups need to start doing something around the club because... Interim manager to the end of the season. Carrick in charge for the next few games. What a joke. That's not change. That is not change. Michael Carrick was assistant coach to Mourinho. He got sacked. He's been assistant coach to Ollie for three years. And now you're giving him the interim post. What a joke as a football club we are. And I tell you what. There will be certain fans out there going, well, it doesn't matter because Ollie's gone. Ollie's gone. What a joke. Look at what's going on at your football club. They think they can throw Ollie under the bus and go, everything's fine. Everyone is happy again now. No. Call it out. Call Woodward out. Call the Glazers out. This club is a bloody disgrace. It's a joke how they're ruining this football club. And they've done exactly what I feared they would do. They've thrown Solskjaer under the bus and pretended that everything's on Ollie. And we'll get a little bit of bounce again now because the players will react. It's the same bloody coach that was there for Mourinho and has been there for Ollie is now in charge. It's a joke. An absolute joke. It's like putting the accomplice in charge after the after a bank robbery. What a joke. And an and, and interim manager to the end of the season. We've been here again. You can't get a bloody manager to come into Manchester United. I'm fuming. I'm absolutely fuming with it. And look, you know, fair play. There'll be a lot of people this morning going, well, just at least Ollie's gone. It's not change. It's not change putting Carrick in front. That's not change. Carrick is on the bloody pitch with McKenna training the players anyway. We're useless. Absolutely useless. And they put the guy who trains them. And you know who Car you know what Carrick is? He's another mate of the ex players. He's another Matt, he's another he's another safe pair of hands. I tell you what, Carrick will be in Carrington right now with his hooks being put onto his wrist, his elbow, and his shoulders, so they can pop it on a string him. This is Sabotage. Sabotage at the highest level. It is corporate sabotage of Manchester United. They just want a puppet in charge and Carrick. It's, no, it's not change. That is not change for Manchester United. This is not change. Glazers out, Woodward out. There needs to be some United movement now behind how this club is being run. Because that is embarrassing. Michael Carrick is interim coach for the next few games. And then an interim till the end of the season. What sort of what sort of shit show are they are they are they putting on at that football club? Manchester United can't go and get a manager. An interim to the end of the season. Are, are, are they thick? Are they absolutely thick? We can't afford to wait till the summer and get a manager in. In the summer, Pogba's gone. Donny will probably go. Martial will go. Bay will go. Ronaldo might go. Cavani will be gone. We need a manager in right here, right now. To solve the problems that need solving in the next six months. There are contracts. There are is recruitment issues. There is structural issues. We can't wait till the summer. If we wait till the summer, next season's a write-off. Next season is a write-off because the new manager is coming into a shambles next summer. It's a mess at the moment, but it can be fixed and next summer can actually be progression again. If we wait till next summer, this club is in a huge mess. You, I cannot believe how incompetent they are. 
and how they can turn something that was meant to be a positive into what is technically a negative, I, I will never understand this. I, I will never understand what they've done today. They've made no change. They've basically kept the same coaches and just sacked Solskjaer. So basically, all we've got is a different guy to pick the team. But we've got the, the same people coaching. Michael Carrick is an interim coach. I mean, he's been longer than he's been there longer than Ollie. He's big. He's more more of a problem than bloody Ollie. He was there with bloody Mourinho. He got Mourinho the sack. Him and McKenna were Mourinho's coaches. Rui Farrier did a good job, second place. He pisses off. We give bloody Mourinho Carrick and McKenna. He's sacked by Christmas. Oh, I just don't believe it. The incompetence at this football club. Reset. Reset button. Press the reset button. Clear out all the sentimental hangers-on and get in a new set of people. Bloody hell. Only United can take a sacking and turn it into a fake sacking. I mean, ah, oh, to be honest with you, blame more Carrick and McKenna than Ollie. This will be worse. Carrick caretaker and Bruce's interim, says Powell. I mean, this is going to get this is going to get worse. This is actually going to get worse. I actually, you know, I didn't feel sorry for Ollie. If I'm Ollie now, I'm going. What the bloody? Why am I sacked and they're in charge? They bloody coach the team. I can't. Yeah, it's just it's hilarious. If you don't laugh, you'll cry. Solskjaer sacked, and then the guy who's been coaching the team is taking charge on Tuesday. Friggin' heck. Uh, at least Carrick won't be the interim coach till the end of the season. Lauren Bonk has been mentioned as an interim till the end of the season, thought, says Salah. But I don't want an interim, Salah. I don't. I know it's better than what we've got, but an interim will... Look, I'll tell you this now. I'll, I will... I will Garrett, if I'm wrong on this, I will apologise. An interim coach will come in without his coaching staff. He will come in on his own. And be supported by, yes, you've guessed it, Carrick, Fletcher and McKenna. This, we're going to be coached by the same coaches till the end of the season. We're just going to have a different Ollie. It's just a different puppet to stand in front of the press conferences. The, if you, I've said this so many times. If you're new, I'll explain it to you. When we sacked Mourinho three years ago, Ollie didn't come in with his own coaching staff. Ollie came in from Mulder with a support team to do a job till the end of the season. And then they employed him in the support team. He didn't pick Carrick and McKenna and Phelan. The club did. They said, Ollie, come and work with Carrick, McKenna and Phelan till the end of the season. Will you help us out? Yes, I will. He came and did it. They did well. They gave him all the job. They all worked together as a management team. This ain't like Pep or Klopp who are the, you know, make loads of decisions around coaching as well as running the team. Pep, Ollie was just the front really. He was 25% of a 100% of a management team. They've just sacked Ollie and kept the others. And it's, I just, but they think fans are stupid. I, I, I predicted this last night. They think fans are stupid. They think that if we sack Ollie, everyone will think it's a new start. I'm too long in the tooth, as are many of you. Ollie said, I mean, somebody go and clip it. Clip it and tweet it, and I'll retweet it. Ollie said numerous times, I don't coach the team. So we've sacked Ollie. We can't play football, we can't defend, we can't play through the middle, we can't play down the flanks, we can't create chances. This is from coaching on the training ground. We've sacked Ollie and the coach who coaches is now running the team. It's just baffling. But they're, they're not ready. It's a classic move by the board. I'm not surprised at all, says Melps. Uh, Justin, thank you very much for your super chat. I'm scared we get a subpar interim who gets a few good results with new manager bounce then offered the job says Jim. Maybe Zidane won't come in mid-season, which is why we're getting an interim. If Blank is the interim in Zidane next season, I don't see a problem, says Louis. And sounds like Oli got best deal. Seven and a half million severance pay and away from our toxic club. Just a dream, but would love uh, director of football uh, Campos and Simeone, says Clarky. The problem with an interim straight away is this. Uh, somebody's just highlighted it there. If the interim does well, fans will start saying give him the job like we did with Ollie, and the club will react to it and give him the job. So an interim is a bad idea because there's no future here. An interim is a plaster on an open wound. An interim cannot plan for the future. We're basically slowly sinking with an interim because there's nothing an interim can do. They're there just to try and steady the ship. They can't, they've got no future. They've got no, they can't control anything. No one's going to sign a new contract for an interim because they don't know what the future is. Bruno won't sign a contract. Luke Shaw won't sign a contract. Donny will still want to go. Pogba will still leave. You know, no one's going to sign for United under this. And any transfer plans, what are they? You know, what are we going to sign in the summer when we haven't even got a coach? Who's? Got... And then, you know, the, the problem with it, the problem with United is, and I, and I just wish it's like somebody who thought like we do could take control of that football club because when a new manager comes in, he's got to go on holiday. And all the players have got to go on holiday. So the new manager comes in at the start of July. He's got to assess the squad. I don't know who I'm keeping and who I'm not. Oh, let's go into the new season. So next season just becomes another wasted season. 
because we, we won't win the league next year. We, we'll be battling for fourth. So we have wasted, with this decision, I, I would predict we've wasted two years because next year is going to be another integration for a new manager. And then the year after that is when it starts. So two years from now, we might start to see some progression. Absolute shambles. You know, how people can keep writing off years for Manchester United is just beyond me. But what this comes down to at the bottom of the day, um, United Scout says, aren't we linked to the interim? I mean, the only interim I would think would be good would be Ranić because he then he would, he would, move, would he move upstairs and appoint the manager. That is the only decision that I would see as a positive, but they haven't even got an interim. If you appoint an interim who's going to become part of the club in the summer and therefore can start to structure things, but United won't do that because they don't want to sack Murta. They don't want to sack Fletcher as the technical director and director of football. So I, I just, uh, I came here expecting some positivity, says Sir Nigel Farage. If Glazers, well, mate, if you want some positivity, maybe get off your arse and start doing something around the club. We can't lie as fans that this club's being run well. What positivity do you want? All right, let's give Nigel a little bit of positivity. Okay. We lost 4-1 yesterday. We've taken four points from 21. We're playing worse football than Stoke. And we've just sacked the manager but kept the coaches. And the coaches are now going to be interims. And also, we're not going to get a new manager in. We're going to get an interim till the end of the season. That's great. And then a new manager comes in and spends another year working on what they do and do, don't want. Do, and, and in two years' time, we are where we are here. It, I just, it's a shambles of a football club run by a bunch of incompetent people. And Edward would need to call it out. Why is he still here? Why is he making decisions? You know, he comes into Carrington hiding his face today. The fans need to call out the board. They don't listen to the fans, but they need to call out the board. Solskjaer's gone and we forgot. Like, Solskjaer's gone and everyone's like, well, wow, why is Carrick now in charge as an interim? Why are you bringing an interim in? If Glazers weren't dopes, they would get Rangnick for interim and then Ten Hag next season, says Lucas. New manager, even if it's Zidane, what's the point if they can't bring in their own coaches and have to use Carrick and friends? David, this was inflicted on Mourinho. Rui Faria left and the club inflicted Carrick and McKenna on him. Ollie had Carrick and McKenna and this next interim is going to get Carrick and McKenna. Um, call out what the problem is. Don't know why everyone's saying Blanc. Some fans just learn with ex-players, puppets. Blanc not great tactically. I mean, I don't mind Lauren Blanc, Dazzo, but the problem is if you bring Lauren Blanc in, he will be working with Carrick and McKenna. That's what's going to happen with an interim manager. They are not going to bring their own team in because they, they're going... Man United want as less of a um, upheaval as they can have they will what 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 they're basically saying if you've tuned in so they've sacked Solskjaer Carrick takes charge for the next and and the the important thing with United is they're such a corporate football club every word is analyzed so when they put a statement out it's not just somebody whacking out a tweet it will have gone through numerous people so you read that last paragraph of what United are saying Michael Carrick will take charge for the next few games so Carrick's going to be in charge for Villarreal Chelsea and probably Arsenal then they're going to appoint an interim to the end of the season. And that interim will be on their own with Carrick and McKenna below them, 100%. And that is not progress. That is throw Solskjaer under his own bus and pretend that everything was on Solskjaer. But the thing is, fans are not stupid because Solskjaer himself said he doesn't coach the team. So, you know, do you think United are waiting for Leicester to sack Brendan and Leicester are waiting on United to offer him out, says Rocks? Well, you can't appoint a manager who's been sacked by Leicester, so that, that doesn't make any sense. So we've got an interim manager until we get an interim manager until we get an actual manager, says Charlie Bass. Yes, and sometimes I wonder how a club as big as Man United are run by a bunch of absolute amateurs. They're absolutely destroying this club, says Amy. And Carrick, compensation package being discussed according to Simon Luckhurst, says Sanna. I hope so. Get them all out. All of them need to go. Get every single... I will only start to feel positive when Carrick's gone, McKenna's gone, Phelan's gone and Ollie's gone. Those four, go. Because anybody else, look, whether it's Ramsey who's just come in, anybody else, they'll go or they'll stay depending on whether they're good. But there's, there's a management team, Carrick, McKenna, Phelan and Ollie, and every one of them need to go. And you know what? That reset button is going to take the piss out of all these people who have spent years standing by them because they're mates. And I'm not, I'm not talking about a certain ex-player there. I'm talking about certain fans, certain ex-players, certain people in the media. That club needs a reset. And we need to take away the fact, oh, I used to play with him, oh, this, that and the other. I know him. I've got him on WhatsApp. Cut it out. Cut it out. Sew it up and get I put a plaster on it and let it heal. Man United need a reset. What I want to see from Manchester United over the next few days is Carrick gone, McKenna gone, 
and a manager in who's here to sort this out long term. Now, the only interim you can bring in to do that is Rangnick, because if you bring Rangnick in, he then goes behind the scenes in the summer and appoints a manager. And yes, it could be Ten Hag. But if you bring Laurent Blanc in, he's gone in the summer or even worse, they're going to give him the job in the summer, which we can't do. We need to bring in a manager. Now, what United, where, where United have gone here is that Manchester United, um, when do the, Sir Nigel Farage says, when does these overrated players take the blame? Um, we'll talk about that. That's a good point. Uh, Carrick conversation, we've done that. But what, what, where this has all gone wrong, and look, Oli's gone now. I tweeted it this morning. For me, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is back in that drawer as a player where I'll never forget what he did for us uh, in the new camp and what I, I enjoy, you know, I, and one of my favourite things about Oli as well. And, you know, I feel, you know, this is the positive thing for me. This morning, I feel like I got Ollie back. I feel quite emotional this morning. I feel like we got Ollie back this morning. And he won't care about this. You know, he'll, he'll be hurting because of his own professional pride. But when I think of Solskjaer, yes, I think of Solskjaer has won it. But I also think Solskjaer in that game at Old Trafford where we're all up for a corner trying to win. And he sprints back on his own. And he, um, he takes out the... Um, can you hurry up? Because that's bla that light's blasting on me. Thanks. Um, and the um, he gets the red card and he gets applauded off. And and that that's that's Ollie for me. He's a, he's a United player. That's what he is. That's his, his his hero status is as a United player. And this nightmare of, of him as a manager is over. It's over for him, but it's over for us. And you know, I, Ollie's Ollie's. I don't I don't have any issue with Ollie now. I mean, we can talk about his legacy. I don't think it's that good, but. I don't feel any malice or anything towards Ollie. And it's interesting because I was getting tagged in stuff last night. I like woke up at three o'clock this morning and I put a tweet out about Donny van der Beek. And people were tagging me in stuff about, you know, get these people out of our club and this certain fan content people you know. And my name was being put in there as associated as being, oh, well, I hope we get relegated so he doesn't support United anymore. Or, you know, you know, toxic abuse of Ollie. At least that's over. And I was like, oh, you know, I, I didn't reply because you don't reply to trolls. But I thought I'll mention this on the show. I've actually... Slated Ollie as a manager, he's useless, he's crap. Get him out of the club. I've never gone in and I've never done like I don't I never liked the PE teacher stuff. I never liked Ollie the Wally stuff. I never liked calling him Gollum or anything like that. That that abuse I don't I don't like the fact that people tell him to F off in the ground yesterday. I don't I've never liked that. I've never liked that. And I've never had a problem with fans singing Ollie's at the wheel like they did yesterday, if they did yesterday. I've got no problem with anybody's opinion about Solskjaer, whether they want to stick with him or not, because ultimately we all dream the same dream and we want the same thing. But I've definitely never been somebody who's abused him. I, I, I wouldn't do that. I don't believe in that. So, yeah, Solskjaer's gone, but the problem hasn't gone. That That's the bottom line. United need to separate the sporting and corporate side. We can't continue like this. I thought I couldn't get more depressed. John uh, says, uh, Tabraz, um, you don't hear the Red Devils moaning, just support your club, man. Football is just entertainment and we all have done, uh, uh, says Venkat. And no company would behave this way. Ed is riding the wave of global rising profits in sports entertainment. That's Mass's complete incompetence, says Gurr. Ollie's been the best manager post Fergie, built the foundations, ready to compete again. Something Mourinho and Van Hal failed to do. That's a load of bollocks, CM. I mean, that's your opinion. Steve Bruce is the answer, says Paul. Van Hal and Mourinho won trophies. Van Hal totally rebuilt the football club in relation to youth recruitment. Um, what has Ollie done? What, what's Ollie done at that football club? Please tell me this myth about Ollie rebuilding the structure. Van Hal did more for the structure of this club than anyone. He got the youth team playing the same way as the first team. He started getting the club to sign 14, 15, 16 year olds from around Europe. Van Hal started it. It continued under Mourinho to be fair because the club had already put that structure in place. If you want to go back, look, Van Hal deserved to be sacked, but if you want to go back to the structure of this football club, it was Van Hal who put a lot of the structure in place because he knew how to do that from his days in, in Dutch football. So Ollie's structure, we've got countless young players that should have had game time and they've not had it. So, uh, you know, don't start, you know, re 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 rewriting history because the club want you to believe that. Ollie was a poor coach. He's probably one of the poorest coaches we've ever had. So, but it's over. The, you know, I don't want to get into a debate about Ollie. As I said, Ollie for me is back in that drawer of being a club hero as a player. What's terrifying me this morning is that you can take Solskjaer out of the club, but you're not taking the people who make the decisions out of the club. And why we're not getting Zidane and why we're not getting Rodgers and why we're not getting Ten Hag is because this football club decided... And listen to this, because this is, this, is, this is the situation. In the international break, 
when fans were going, what's going on at our football club? You've got to sack the manager. We're in a laughing stock. This is what the people in power on the board decided to do after Man City. When we had four points from 18, we'd been humiliated and the inevitable was staring us in the face. You know, Watford was probably a little bit earlier than we thought, but we knew another result like that was coming. This is what United board decided to do in the international break. Well, actually, before I tell you what they did, this is what a competent board would have done. They would have sacked Solskjaer on the Sunday morning. They would have spent the two weeks going after people for the job to come in and have a little bit of time with the team and they would have gone and got them and that's what they would have done and two weeks was the time to do that. You know what United did? Kick Cat FC, take a break, run and hide and seek. That's nine days off. Everyone everyone go and hide for nine days and let's wait for it to all blow over. You know, it's like that film, isn't it? Shaun of the Dead. Let's go down that pub and wait for it all to blow over. It's That's what United did. So there was no plan in place. There was no conversation with any managers. They did nothing. They have to sack him last night and now they're like, we, we, you know, that statement is an absolute disgrace for a football club. Norwich sacked a manager and got a manager in. Villa sacked a manager and got a manager in. United have had to sack a manager they don't want to sack, but they've kept his coaching team and they're talking about an interim to the end of the season. They've got, they've got nothing in place. That's why they're putting statements out like that. That statement should be sackable in itself for anybody associated to it. We're putting Michael Carrick in charge for a few games and we're going to get an interim to the end of the season. You know what that translates to to me? We are fucked. It, so, sorry to swear, but we are. Like, we've written this season off and we're probably writing next season off. We've sent this club in the space of a few, mi a few lines back to where we were probably just after Moyes. We're probably where, you know, I'm trying to think where we are now over the last eight years. We're probably where we were after Moyes, in a bloody mess. There is no plan, there is no structure, and it's going to take ages to unpick this. Because they've got nobody to... What they need is, they need a manager, like a Klopp, or a Pep, or a Tuchel, or a Conte, to come in right here, right now, and rebuild this club from right here, right now. What they're going to do is put Carrick in charge for a few games. Then they're going to get another interim in to just, you know, tread water for a bit. And then next summer, we're going to try and rebuild. So the rebuild's not even going to start until next summer. We're not even at bloody Christmas yet. Would you be angry at Ronaldo if you wanted to go after how this season has gone? Mate, I think that, you know what? The, the, the problem is, I think we're on the, we might not have hit the depths. Normally, when you sack a manager, you get in the elevator and you you, you, know, you get on a trampoline and you start bouncing back up a level. The, the, the news this morning, Solskjaer going had to happen. I'm not convinced we're, we're still on the elevator down. I'm, I'm not convinced we're getting off. I still think we could go down further because it's a mess. And, you know, what if Carrick beats Villarreal and Chelsea? I mean, what 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 is that? I don't see this as a change. I still... I still feel that going into Villarreal and Chelsea, all we're going to get is a bit of a bounce because it's the same coaches in charge. You know, people think, oh, we'll pick Donny and, 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 and uh, Matic. Well, he's the guy who's probably been telling Ollie to pick McTominay and Fred. I mean, Carrick's been trying to turn McTominay into him for the last bloody three years. <sighs> Would you be... Uh, let's have a look at something that... Member, welcome, Aldo. Please subscribe to the channel, by the way. Smash a like on the video. Uh, Manchester United is just like a car whose engine has issues. Ollie was just a driver of this broken car. If you want to be race, you need to change the engine. Spot on, Pranav. Sai says, I know this is too much, but instead of Carrick, not give Ronaldo the managerial position for time being. Why would Ronaldo be a manager, though, say? I mean, sentimentality again, isn't it? Welcome to the members club. Wouldn't it surprise me if Mike Bassett was appointed their interim manager, says Korea Vids. And uh, Carrick is coming in as interim, so does that mean if he does well, he'll get a permanent contract? Not another ex-player as manager Carrick needs to go. Carrick's not coming into anything, Joel. Like, those players work with Carrick every day for the last three and a half years. You know, this is not a change for the players. This is not a change for the players at all. So, uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's a smokescreen. Effectively, it's a smokescreen. They've not actually changed anything. Um, I'm just having a quick look on Twitter. Um, you, you, if United win a couple of games, that they will want Manchester United... Um, I mean, Laurie Whitwell has just tweeted out from The Athletic. I mean, this this is enough to make you sick. Um, I'm going to tweet this. I'm, I've got to tweet this. Absolute joke. You can, and I'll read it out.
So this is from Laurie Whitwell. I've just quote tweeted it. Um, so let me read this. This is this is gonna. This might wind some of you up. I think it's disgusting, and it, it's it's my worst fear. So Solskjaer is the only one who departs. Kieran McKenna and Mike Phelan will be assistants to Michael Carrick. Darren Fletcher still has hybrid technical director stroke coaching role. United had no plans to dismiss, dismiss Solskjaer, but Watford made it clear that change was needed. Absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Um, you know what? Manchester United supporters trust the Red Army. You know, you've got, you know, all the other groups, you've got the power to do something here. This football, this is not about managers and coaches. This is about Ed Woodward and the Glazers. What is going on at this football club? It's an absolute embarrassment. What United have done this morning is disgusting. They've taken Solskjaer, they've thrown him under the bus, and then they've kept the same coaches in place and tried to sell it as change. They are absolutely sinking this football club to levels we've never, we never even thought we could go to. Like, how thick do they think people are? They're gonna, there's going to be a backlash to this. And you know what? It'll probably be Jamie Carragher again who calls it out because it won't be any of the United X players doing it. And, it. and I hope the media call it out and I hope the fans call it out as well. That is not change. That is like a garage door that's broken and instead of taking it out and putting a new garage door in, you just give it a lick of paint. That, that is a disgrace. So Solskjaer, who has openly spoken about his managerial team, 25% Oli, 25% Phelan, 25% McKenna, 25% Carrick, they've got rid of 25% and kept 75% in charge. That is the same coaching setup on Tuesday. And I think we probably will get a bit of bounce from the players because, yeah, technically a manager's been sacked. That's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. What a... What, what a absolute joke of a football club that is a disgrace I feel I actually didn't feel sorry for Solskjaer now I do he is scapegoated they've destroyed that guy they've he should not be walking out on his own taking the blame for that that is a disgrace absolutely disgraceful treatment of a of, of, of a club hero like that and he's been a bad manager but there's apps I will argue it with anyone there is absolutely no way he is 100% involved in, that, in in what's been going on. He doesn't even take the coaching. He's not the guy who puts the cones out and tell them, tells them what patterns of play they're working on. That's Carrick and McKenna. Unbelievable. What a, what a, what a horrible, horrible football club. What a, and they've took all night to decide to do that. I just hope Sir Alex has nothing to do with this. I don't think he will be. I, I, I don't think any genuine carer of Manchester United would be involved in a shit show decision like that. An absolute smokescreen. And what happens now? We get an interim to come and work with Carrick and McKenna again. Bloody joke. Absolute joke. Carrick, whilst they find an interim, who would do an interim role now other than Zidane? I don't, Zidane won't do interim party. I can wait seven months for the right manager to come in. City waited for Pep. I can wait for Ten Hag rather than Zidane now. And miss Ten Hag, please, says Rook. Mate, I don't think... I, I mean, look, it's an interesting point, but I don't think you're actually listening to the problems at United. What are you waiting for seven months for? Who are you? Like, what are you? Do you understand? For seven months, you're going to sit there and let the club just rot for seven months. Like, we need, we need to fix now. We're a sinking ship. Like, we need to start now. There are so many important things that need sorting in seven months. A manager comes into United now, it's a problem. A manager comes in in the summer, summer we could be a bloody disgrace. Like, you know, how many players will be gone in the summer before that manager comes in? Where will we be in the summer? Will we, will we be in the Europa League? Like, we need a manager right here, right now. And to be honest with you, if we were run properly, if Zidane doesn't want the job, why doesn't he want the job? And and if he if he can't be changed his mind, why are we even talking to him? If Brendan Rodgers doesn't want the job, why doesn't he want the job? And if he doesn't want the job, you move to the next. You, you know, we're acting like you can't get a manager. Of course you can get a bloody manager. He might not be the manager you want, but we need a manager now. And why are you waiting till the summer to get a manager? What why why? Why are we waiting for Brendan Rodgers to go, I want to stay with Leicester till the end of the summer? Fuck off! Screw it! You, you want to wait for less? You want to you want to say no to United till the summer? F off! Ten Hag wants to wait till the summer. Piss off! 
We're Manchester United. Look, you either want this... If people are telling us to wait, it's a big hint that they're probably not the right man. You either want this job or you don't. I suspect people want this job, but United don't want to pay. I don't, I don't genuinely think managers are going to go, I don't want to take Manchester United. It's the perfect time to take United because we're on our knees, but the squad is very good. There's an instant impact with that squad for any manager that's worth their salt. I don't believe managers don't want this job. I just think the board are incompetent. I, I, I don't think that managers are waiting. I think the club are incompetent. And I think the club are like, oh, we need seven months to have a good old think and figure out how we protect ourselves. I don't, this is not decisive leadership at the football club. I think this seven months interim thing is because we're incompetent. I don't think, I think if we offered the right manager the right money, they'd be in charge by Tuesday. But we, are, we don't want to do that. Why do you think Zidane is not taking the job? If not up to him, who can take it? Well, Zidane might not be taking the job for many reasons. He might not be taking the job because we're not offered him the job. Or he might not be taking the job because he's looking at the way the club's running and going, I don't want anyone, anything to do with that. Uh, Charlie says, I thought United had an agreement with Must when it comes to big decisions. Surely they can have a big part in this uh, shit show. You're having a laugh, Charlie. Manchester United supporters just got nothing to say in relation to managers. Absolutely nothing. How can this stupid board give up League and Champions League before Christmas? Look what Chelsea did with two cows as Pratic. I don't want our club to panic buying a manager from the Black Friday sales bin. The only reason he got to the job is because we are panic buying, says FT. Um, this statement shows that the only people who, uh, who will work with this club are ex-players who can be emotionally blackmailed to work with this dysfunctional board and club. How has it come to this? Oh, that's a great point, Andrew O'Brien. Uh, you stay sinking ship. The ship has already sunk. Why should fans bother missing sleep to watch this anymore? I stopped watching live games for a long time, says Stephen Lee. We can't get a manager because they see how bad the board is. The club is sinking ships, says Pratosaurus Rex. You know what? If that is true, or there's any truth in that, that managers don't want to come here because of the board, and the fans have had enough of the board, there's a very obvious thing there. But for some reason, we're not able to get this board out of our football club. You know, Edward would still here. Why are these people still here? Because they've got the power to ride out any storm. Um, Rogers is not 100% safe at Leicester. Maybe the incompetent board is waiting to see if they sack him. You can't, Nick. You can't afford. You can't wait for Rogers to get sacked from Leicester to give him a United job. I mean, I would take Rogers if we could get him out of Leicester, but I wouldn't take Rogers sacked from Leicester to United. That that's that's you can't do that. You can't appoint a United manager who's been sacked by Leicester. Conte wanted the job. We didn't want someone as competent and professional as him, says Gabe. And that, to me, is something that needs to be addressed. Like, that really does need to be addressed. We could have had Conte two weeks ago, and he would have been exactly what we need. And the funny thing is, Spurs are playing today. I think they'll beat Leeds, and I think they'll start to move past us. I think they go above us today. And you look at what Spurs did, decisive. They sacked... I mean, look, it's not actually... I think what Villa did was quite interesting... Um, because they brought in uh, Gerard from Rangers, but I actually think when you're looking for the for a real football club acting well, look at Spurs. Nuno had only been there three months. There was none of this. Oh, he's been here three years. We want it to work. You know, Spurs went right. Nuno, you're gone. Conte, you're in, and they acted. And and that and that they didn't go for an interim. They acted. United just just haven't prepped. With proper management, we can still salvage this season. Why are we giving up on this season like it doesn't matter? We're Manchester United. Well, Muzzy, because we're directed by the board. I'm not giving up on this season. I'm frustrated. I think if we get a proper managing, manager in, we can do something this season. Tom says, this squad is actually quite poor. There's an issue with quality, attitude and aptitude. Managers are avoiding this job. It's a hiding to nothing, says Tom. And uh, an absolutely disgrace, Mark. Manchester United is no longer a football giant. It's a commercial giant backpacking off rich history. And I've had it, says Brad. Well, just to reiterate the situation, Phelan's still here. Carrick's going to be in charge. McKenna's still here. Everybody's still here apart from Solskjaer. And I mentioned this a few weeks ago. I feared that the club would do this. I can't believe they have done it. Where you take Solskjaer and you try and sell to the world that he's the problem and you throw him off. I mean, the tr you know... The treatment of Solskjaer by the club in the last 12 hours is just appalling. To throw him out and hang him out to dry on his own. that He never deserved that. He didn't deserve that. He should have been gone with Phelan and Carrick and McKenna. Collective blame. They had collective collective success. You know, Ollie never shut up about how good his coaches were. So they should walk, you know, they should be gone with him. Like, you know, shame on them for not going with him. Like, because he is now castigated, hung out to dry by the club. And those coaches are like, yeah, we're still here. 
Fucking joke. Disgraceful. And and the club are at, at fault. Would I take Carlos Queres as interim? Fuck God no. Like what are we? What? Why would we go back and take somebody who's been here in the past? Like I'm tired of it. And you know what? We go and get someone like Carlos Queres or R Rennie Mullenstein, and you know what happens? The old ex players. Oh, I used to play for him. He's a top guy. Give him time. Give him the job. I don't care what it is. Get the contract. Get the pen. Give him a job. No. I don't want Mullenstein. I don't want Querez. I don't want anybody who's had anything to do with this football club again. I want a reset. I want something new. Sir Alex Ferguson came down from Aberdeen. He had no touch point with Manchester United and he rebuilt it. He rebuilt United in his own way. We need a new Manchester United. Not an, oh, I used to do this, I used to do that. No. It's still going to be 4 2 3 1, McTominay and Fred, says David. Ronaldo destroyed everything that was built. Players thought that thought they were leaders got relegated, says JP. What are you talking about? Mark, we need Ranić. He's the only one who will come in now, says David. Mark, I think we need less criticism of Oli and more criticism of Maguire. Interested to hear your thoughts, says Vito. Um, look, it's about Oli getting the sack t this morning, but I'm not going to ignore the fact that two people have asked that. Um, look, I saw a picture about Harry Maguire in a pub or club last night or a restaurant taking pictures and smiling. <sighs> it's not a good look. It's not a good look, but at the end of the day, human beings have got every right to go out and out and have a meal what i think is an interesting thing is that last night i didn't go out to a pub i didn't go out for a meal we were live on this channel talking to united fans who were very stressed so it just shows you the modern footballer really um and i, I think one of the things that really caught my eye and i retweeted it was harry Maguire albania harry Maguire sent off harry Maguire in a pub three pictures and i said and, and it was basically like would pogba be getting away with this and he wouldn't you certainly wouldn't get ex-players saying this is the future of our football club. So, you know, Maguire's in that situation as, as, as a few English players are, where they're just above criticism and they get away with it. But, you know, I, 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 I worry about Harry Maguire. I do worry about him. I think he's a good player, but I think he's such a bad player at the moment. And I forget about red cards and, you know, his behaviour off the pitch and his leadership skills and his captaincy. The captaincy shouldn't be on his arm. Like, that should not be on his arm. I think I, I really think that should have been taken off him off him after the Greece issues, really, because I think he had too much on his plate. But um, I, I worry about him as a footballer. I, I think he's damaged himself so much over the last few weeks that I worry about him as a footballer. He's almost got to play flawlessly for the next year to, to put this behind him. And I think any mistakes now, it's a bit like Ollie at the end. I think Maguire's put himself into a, in an area like a few other players where it's like, patience is gone you know you've you've been quite arrogant in in the way that you've behaved and we've been we've been absolutely terrible during that arrogance so i think certain players have got have got uh, a lot of work to do but um they will get a clean slate but they're, they're not getting a clean slate with the same people coaching them i'm sick of them sack the board back the team says oliver oliver mccormack um Roy Keane as interim won't happen, but at least he would call out our underperforming stars. No, Kieran, not for me. That's just sensationalist, like passion, sentimentality. I don't want Roy Keane anywhere near the job. Gary Neville said before Ollie was appointed, United need to get best in class. Was Ollie best in class? No, says Joe Fa. Mark, nobody is going to touch United now because just look what they've done to Ollie. No one's going to work with coaches we've kept. We're a disgrace, says Andy and Bruno. And surely see, people see how perfect Ranjek is. He comes in as interim and brings some form of competence upstairs, says Alex. And uh, Ollie will be announced as advisor next week. That's how we sack people, says Sean from Ireland. But no, just going back to that previous point i think it's absolutely spot on we don't know the truth because united won't reveal the truth they just put things out there we sacked solskjaer by social media last night i th I, I thought that was appalling you know solskjaer was actually sacked at, at 11 o'clock last night by social media united took 12 hours to do it officially so they allowed the they allowed leaks to sack solskjaer last night that's disgusting they did it to van hal as well um the coaches that are to blame have basically stayed at the club and let Ollie go. You know, if they had anything about them, they would have said no to the interim and said, we don't want to stay on, um, so pay us off. They've they've thrown a manager under the bus. So those coaches are now very much, you know, I don't know what the word is for our coaches, but they've, they've thrown Ollie under the bus. You know, they, they might not think that and Ollie might not think that, but perception is everything. The board have absolutely thrown a manager under the bus so you're right. When you look at the board and the coaches right now, there is a lot of um, angry, frustrated and deception uh, there. So, 
you know what? We're not a very appealing football club. We've got fantastic fans. We've got some fantastic players. But the way this club is run is a disgrace. The way they acted in the Super League. I mean, I, I know for a fact that there's players in that football club that can't stand the board. Like, they can't stand the way the football club's run. They love the fans. They love the club and what it stands for. But they don't like the way it's run. They were disgusted with how the club did the Super League. And they won't... I, I've not spoken... I've not heard anything this morning. But they won't be happy with what's happened there. The way Solskjaer is now... I mean, Solskjaer's on his own in the world. He's basically been kicked out of United. It's all your fault. And yeah, anyone with a brain knows that's not the case. Uh, you know, a part of me is, is, is actually thinking, why is Solskjaer not in charge for Villarreal? Because this is no change. Uh, any blame go towards Martin Edwards with the Glazers, said David Page. Uh, it's overdue, but now he's gone and the club continue to make fools of themselves. Who is going to want to come and manage here? Has the appeal gone, says Jake. And I, I think Jake... A lot of people have mentioned that this morning and it's probably the first time I would acknowledge it. I think you are at the point now where certain managers would go, I don't want to go anywhere near that club. There will be there will be a lot who still, still will, but there'll be you know managers who don't need to join us will go, yeah, I don't fancy that. At least we won't have to hear Ollie's presses and post-match interviews. Can you please have Jordan, Adam, Kevin on the show tonight? They are on tonight, Michelle. Yes, they are. Well, you know what? You know what we've got tomorrow? This is what we've got tomorrow. Let me get the headphones in. Michael Carrick. Hey, hey, man, yeah, me and Ollie, yeah, yeah, no, it was all Ollie's fault, man, yeah, I, 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 I was nothing to do in it, man, yeah, I was just listening to um, um, uh, classic Queen Abba Gold, yeah, no, I, I, I just, I, I couldn't stand it at the end, yeah, rubbish, rubbish Newcastle accent, but that's what we've got tomorrow, we've got Michael Carrick doing the press, in, press, press conference, you know, if you can't bring a bit of comedy into it, what can you do, it's, Carrick and McKenna have been at United, part of United's failure, longer than Ollie. When Mourinho finished second, Rui Farrier was assistant coach. When Mourinho got sacked, Carrick and McKenna had just joined him. Mourinho finished second. Carrick and McKenna joined him in the summer. Mourinho was sacked by Christmas. Carrick and McKenna stayed with Ollie for three years. Ollie sacked. Carrick and McKenna are now still here. Like the club can try and plaster this up as much as they like, but people aren't stupid. You know, there are certain people in that club that are being kept. You know, Carrick and McKenna are like the McFred of the first team. Like they are they are surviving. God knows how. Um, but um, I mean, some people are even talking that Carrick might be the interim till the end of the season. That's not a change. Uh, that's not a change. Um, I've just retweeted somebody as well because I think it encapsulates exactly what the problem is. Um and I've retreated myself. There's, there's a lot of anger online. Um, uh, Romano's just tweeted as well. Phelan and Carrick. Uh, sorry, Phelan and McKenna will stay in Manchester United as things stand. Michael Carrick asked this morning for both to help in the backroom staff. Manchester United are working to find an interim manager as soon as possible. So McKenna and Phelan, McKenna and Phelan were going to go, but it looks like... Um, they're uh, they're not going to now. Um, um, Yeah, so the, so the situation is Michael Carrick is in charge of Manchester United until Manchester United find an interim. That interim thing, you know, the United's future rests on the next few days, really, because if the interim is Lauren Blanc on his own with Carrick and McKenna underneath him, I think this season's a mess. If the interim is Ralph Ranjik and he's then going to go upstairs and we're going to get like a Ten Hag in the summer, then there might be a future. Um Salah, Salah says if we get Blanc and he does well, will he be permanent? Well, the thing about Lauren Blanc is I, I I did a video on Lauren Blanc three years ago. It might be worth going and finding it. I'll tweet it when I, when I find it. Um, so I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say I don't want Lauren Blanc because I actually thought three years ago he'd be quite decent. He did a good job at Bordeaux. But I think Lauren Blanc's the sort of person that will have hooks put onto him and he'll keep Carrick and McKenna. And I don't want them. I, I don't want them. I, I actually think we'll... 
I think I think we're in a very odd situation at United, and I think we have been for a long time. But I think we're in an odd situation in so much that we don't know what the next step is going to be. We we don't know where we're going to go, and we we when you sack a manager, you expect to bounce. We might not bounce. You know, we might not bounce from this because it's not really a change. I would love to see what Mourinho has to say about Carrick and McKenna, says Jacob. If the coaches all went with Ollie, who would be there for the players over the next few games, says Christopher. Do you think this will be the squad, bring the squad closer together or create a bigger rift between the Ollie favourites and the Ollie outers in the squad? Well, that's a great point from Michelle because if you think about it, if you're one of the outsiders, Carrick and McKenna are, are probably people you don't really trust or like anyway because they've not been advising Ollie to pick you. So. The team against Villarreal will be very interesting. Um, but look, ultimately, even if the team changes, it's still the same coaches. We're not going to suddenly start playing different football, I don't think. How can the board be allowed to do this? Key players with contracts expiring will not sign with an interim. How is no one doing anything serious and contract to reshape the club, says Mazzimo. And I was Ollie out for years and you drove me crazy giving chances. You ignored my 2,000 word email. Please don't do the same now with Maguire. He's a disgrace, says Paul. Neeson, and I would love to hear what Magrini okay. And uh, Mike says, Carrick is manager, joke of a club. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, uh, breaking news, Gary Neville says, Carrick is the man for the job. Oh, Gary will love Carrick as the job. You know, the thing about Carrick is, he's, you know, if, whatever you think about Solskjaer, Carrick's closer to Rio and Gary and Scolzi and everybody else because he played with them. Um, that That's, uh, you know, that, that, that's what he did, isn't it? So, um they're, 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 they're actually closer Ronaldo would be a better option as player manager instead of Carrick we could be in the Europa League again I'm so depressed as Gabe but we'll watch this space with um, Cristiano Ronaldo because in relation to Ronaldo he might be a manager that um, doesn't actually um, sorry, sorry he might be a player that doesn't actually um, stay at the club very long you know, as I said, this situation could get worse before it gets better. Uh, everyone assumes that you know it's going to get better. It could get worse before it gets better. Yeah, it could do. Uh, sorry, I was just reading something there. Got nearly forty thousand watching. Please smash a like on the video and subscribe. We have got an eight o'clock show tonight. Um, whether we're going to get any other updates today or not, I don't know. Um, look, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been sacked. I'm. At the start of the show, I was losing my shit. I've calmed down a little bit now. This is the great thing about live content. You get real reaction. Um, and look, I don't really give a shit about people who don't like what I say or what we say on this channel because it always comes from the heart and it's always about what's best for Manchester United. Um, I could have gone live and gone, Solskjaer's been sacked. This is great news. We go again. Well, I, 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 I don't. I, I, I scratch the surface like you do and I look at it and I go... So Solskjaer has been absolutely humiliated by this football club. He's been thrown up and, you know, thrown onto the front pages as the problem. Yeah, we've got rid of Oli, we've got rid of Oli, Oli's out, this, that and the other. But you know what? They sacked Mourinho and they kept his coaches. They've sacked Oli and they've kept his coaches. Listen to this and tell me why we fail. Jose Mourinho, Rui Faria left second place that summer they didn't back him they gave him Carrick and McKenna we were shit that season and then and then Mourinho got sacked in the December Mourinho was sacked Carrick and McKenna stayed Ollie came in worked under them three years later three years of mainly crap football Solskjaer gets sacked Carrick and McKenna stay tell me why we fail tell me why a football club is keeping for the third tenure the same two coaches that were part of Mourinho's failure part of Oli's failure and now they're going to be part of what somebody else's journey because I think if they did bring Lauren Blanc and he won't be bringing a backroom staff it, it will be you've got to work with Carrick and McKenna and who makes that decision the board Ed Woodward this is where this is why we fail the board I've got no idea how to run a football club they don't I think they think coaching's not that important it's the man who picks the team but when you watch United, the players you know, may as well have blindfolds on. They're coached so badly. That's not going to change. I really hope how Do now Donny gets good playtime. Feel for the lads, says Addy. I've been following Premier League and this channel only for Ollie. Good luck to all and hope the club returns to old heights again, says Odin. Terrifying thought, Mark. What if they appoint Rooney? Oh, for God's sake, skin. Yeah. 
Oh my god. Yeah, I'd never even thought of something like that. We need to uh, we need someone to who isn't scared to play youth instead of playing them the same lineup week after week even as fans we knew what this team would be says Kyle and uh, welcome to members club night. What we need is we need a specialist professional. Conte would have been perfect. I don't necessarily like Conte's style of football, but we've got Rafael Varane, David De Gea, Paul Pogba, Bruno Fernandes, Cristiano Ronaldo. Five foreign superstars now i'll use the word foreign because i don't see foreign or british as anything different like the media do but the reason i use those five players is that when you look at english players they're overhyped oh yeah but they don't win anything rashford's not won anything Maguire, luke shaw i mean i mean i know they've won a europa league but you know they don't really they're not winners they're hyped by the media into what they you know this has always happened it's, it's happened for 30 years english players get overhyped Foreign players come to this country and do well because they're, they're very good footballers. We need a manager that can manage Cristiano Ronaldo, David De Gea, Rafael Varane, Bruno Fernandes, solve the Paul Pogba problem. You know, we need a manager to come in and those people need to respect them. They don't respect Carrick and McKenna and Fletcher. They see them as their mates. We need a manager to come in and reset this club and come in with authority, which is why Zidane would be perfect, but obviously doesn't want the job. It's why Conte would have been perfect. What we need, the board don't want, because what we need is somebody to come in and kick some ass and say, look, I ain't intimidated by any of you. I know how I want to play football. I know what I want to do, and this is how I'm going to do it. What United want to do is put somebody in who they can control, but by them, if you put somebody in who's a puppet, that the board can... I mean, how how weak do you have to be to be controlled by Ed Woodward? So, Ed Woodward and the Glazers want someone they can control. But by putting someone they can control in, it automatically makes the players be able to control them as well. We need a strong manager. An experienced, strong manager. But they don't want that because that strong manager will then control the board and the board don't want to be controlled. So, we're always going to fail because the board need a manager they can control... But if the board can control the, ma the manager, the players can control the manager as well. Would you take Scolari as an interim? I think he's had his best days, Nigel. Uh, Deng, thank you very much for your super chat. I just uh, think waiting for the right manager with loyalty and philosophy is the best solution rather than just going for whoever is available. Ten Hag, says Rook. I, I disagree, Rook. I mean, you've got every right to say that, but it's you know it's a passionate show, but I disagree. What, why? No football club should write off seven months. Football, move, you know... I always like to give a bit of evidence. Tuchel came in in January. Chelsea's football club were on their knees. Chelsea finished in the top four and won a Champions League in five months. Why would you write seven months off? So much can happen in seven months. Paul Pogba could sign a new deal. Donny van der Beek could become one of our best players. Martial could reinvent himself. You know, uh, Delo could become a really good right back. Um, you know, Eric Bailly could take Maguire's place and be really good. You know, those things aren't going to happen, but, you know loads of things we could win the champions league loads of things could happen in seven months but they won't happen if we just stick with an interim and, and carrick you know that's not going to happen so you know football you can't wait seven months uh niall welcome to members club i think we did that mark i dread to think what they will do in the january transfer window they won't spend Stephen. they can't spend anything in the january transfer window you, you literally cannot spend anything uh, why is Carrick still here? I hope they also do not go for Rodgers. The guy is not even impressed at Leicester. I don't see him doing well at United. He's not impressed at Leicester. He's got them in the top top four race for the last two years and won an FA Cup. I, I, I think, you know, I think you just, you know, some people's opinion on Rodgers is a little bit, uh, what's the word, blinkered. But I'd take him. I'd take him. I'd, I'd definitely take him over an interim. Mark, I still feel like Oli is at the club because of the coaches. We're still going to be a poor team, says Barry. I think that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, I think we must wait and see what Carrick and these coaches can do. No, Josh, I don't I don't think we should. If you want to wait and see what they can do, that's fine. I'm telling you now, there might be a bounce, but they are the same coaches that have coached us for the last three and a half years. Seeing what they can do, we already know what they can do. Uh, Man United, and look, um, hi Mark hi Mark hi Mark what did that say I have never heard of Ten Hag who is he he's the Ajax manager Connor um, also somebody saying see what they can do what are you going to do give them the job like and, and also more importantly imagine if Carrick and McKenna and Phelan do really well for 10 games would that surprise you 
We've been here before, literally three years ago. It's this, you know, the hilarious thing is Carrick, McKenna and Phelan have already been here as an interim. They did it after Mourinho and we played good football for 10 games because everyone felt released and happy. So why would you be surprised if it if it went okay? But we've you know, it's like bloody Groundhog Day. We've been here before. It's the same people again. Hi Mark, I think is it just me, but I believe we are overacting a bit. I mean, what else were they going to say anyway? We're sacking everyone, says Rahul. Yeah, that's what that's what they should have done, Rahul. They should have sacked a lot of them. Yeah. That's exactly what they should have done. If a tactical interim coach comes in, then surely Carrick and McKenna won't be a problem, says Comez. And, um, you know, you're talking logically. You're talking like a manager's going to be able to come in and do what they want to do. If they bring an interim in and say they're your coaches, then the coach can't, the manager doesn't matter how tactical they are if they've got coaches who aren't very good. Can the United stand do anything to get the Glazers out? Not without everybody else's support, Charlie. And we'll never disrespect a man who loves the club as much as we do. It's a better team than he took over. Next manager has a real chance of success, says Daniel. I disagree. I don't think it's a better team than, he, than we took over. I think it's a better squad because of the money that he got, but he got more money than anybody else. I don't think we are playing... I think we're playing some of the worst football we've ever played. Um, I think the confidence is on the floor. I think the coaching is abysmal. I think uh, the structure is terrible I think the path to the first team for the youth players is non-existent I think the only positive from Solskjaer is that he spent more money than everybody else and therefore the squad is better than the Mourinho squad but I don't think we're in a better position football I don't think we're in a better position vision um, and Mourinho and Van Hal, Van Hal actually won things so I, 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 I think Solskjaer has to go down as one of the worst coaches Manchester United have ever had I do. I, I, I do think that. I think when you scratch the surface of it, yes, the squad's good, but that's because he had a load more money to spend than anyone else. Like, I don't think he's one of the best. I think he's one of the worst coaches we've ever had. And I think that's why this morning I'm quite frustrated for Oli because I think he's been thrown out like everything was on him. And yet the same people who were part of the problem are still up at the club. Uh, rather than getting Rogers from Leicester, we should get the people who run the club. They know what they're doing, says Meb3. Yeah, I would take Leicester's owners. I'm pissed, Mark. Get rid of these coaches. You're telling me we have to watch the same crap under the same coaches. I'm pissed, says Bradley. Uh, Dale says, Mark, you have the pissed off face of Mourinho when he stormed off that Man United presser, says Dale. And yeah, but I said this last night and I'll, I'll say it again now. Sacking Solskjaer is, is, it solves the problem if you get rid of all of them and you bring a good coach in. Sacking Solskjaer, keeping the same coaches and going for an interim, it doesn't change anything for me. It, it really doesn't change much. We'll never disrespect man and loves the club as much as we have done that one. And Nick P says, I feel like if we keep not performing, a lot of the blame will now be director at the players. Ollie's not there to take the blame anymore, says Nick P. And Amar says, I'm a bit sad on the way Ollie left, but he needs to blame himself and the board, says Amar. Yeah, I think the way he's... I think um, the thing about United is, and it happened with Mourinho, and it really happened with, with, with Van Hal. And I'm glad you've said that, because I really wanted to say this and I would have forgotten. I said this about Ollie for a long time towards the end. I said it about Oli when he stuck up for the Glazers with the Super League. Oli was always loyal to Ed Woodward and the Glazers. He never, ever, ever even hinted at you know throwing them in the bus. He always said, we've had a good summer. He always said they've been very good to me. He's always said they're good people. Oli was loyal to a fault for the Glazers and Woodward. And I said it time and time again. You should be very careful about that because, yeah, Ollie's got his principles and, you know, fair play to Ollie for that. He's a nice guy. That's all everyone ever says. But, you know, being loyal to the Glazers and Ed Woodward, history shows you what they will do. When they need to protect themselves, they won't fight with you. They'll spin you around and they'll stab you in the back. And Ollie has been thrown to the wolves by them over the last 12 hours. The way they sacked him by social media last night, the way they've only sacked him and kept all the coaches in place and thrown him out to the Wolves, you know, and yet Ollie was loyal to them. And, and many of us said it, you know, that's blind loyalty. That is really blind loyalty because that when they don't need you anymore, they will throw you out in the trash. And I think that the way they've treated him over the last 12 hours, no matter how bad of a coach he is, is appalling. Um, and that just goes to show you, you can't, you know, no manager should be blindly backing the, the, this, this ownership. Um, and you know what? I'll say it again. I personally think Fletcher, Carrick, Phelan, McKenna should have gone to the board and said, "No, I'm not. We're not staying on. You know, you, you, you know, we're just we're not staying on, and we're not resigning." So, payers. 
Uh, could really see Phil Neville as interim, says Jack. Uh, Carrick and McKenna can survive a holiday with the McCanns, so because of the poor planning by the board, not expecting things to get so bad. If we sack everyone, then there's no one left to train the team, says Twisted. And uh, sacking Ollie and not the coaches is like killing the alpha line and letting the pride survive. You're still stuffed. How, how's that for analogy, analogy, Mark, says Don. It's a good one, yeah. Never mind the football. I'm just glad I don't have to listen to his interviews anymore. They were hard work, says Pip. Mate, you've never heard Michael Carrick talk in an interview. You got that tomorrow. Ollie is 10 times more enthusiastic and uh, communicative than Carrick. Carrick is, uh, ain't great. Um, check a tweet by Mark Ogden. Let's just have a quick check. Let's have a look. Still trying to find it. Um, I can't. I'll try to find this. What someone just said. Let me. There we go. I'll just get it like that. Here we go. Let's see what he's got to say. So this is ESPN, Mark Ogden. Um, Solskjaer rejected chance to improve coaching team despite club offer. And he also says that Manchester United started assessing options seriously after the Liverpool defeat. So to be unable to identify an interim, let alone a manager, in over a month is a remarkable uh, development. Uh, yeah um. uh, thanks for somebody just sent that yeah I mean look who's next I mean I'll probably do a separate video on that I think we need to just digest where we are at the moment because that's the I think that um I think that um, whilst not surprised, I am somewhat deflated by the fact that, you know, you wake up this morning, you know Solskjaer is officially going to be sacked and then they only sack him and keep his coaching staff there. And, you know, also drop in that, you know, they're not appointing a manager. They're going to put an interim into the summer. They've basically written the season off. That's that's on the Glazers and that's on Ed Woodward. And you know what? Of course, what happened because of the Super League had to happen. But writing a season off when you've got Cristiano Ronaldo in the middle of November is is is, is basically what the club have come out. If you if you if you didn't hear what the statement was from Manchester United, I will just basically read you the final paragraph here because it, it, it basically uh, covers it perfectly. Uh, where was it? Oh God, I can't see it now. Well, I can't find it, but it was basically along the lines of, would you take Lampard at United? No, Joel. And it was along the lines of, uh, Michael Carrick will be the manager for the next few games, not game, games, and they will then appoint an interim until the, the summer. So that is writing your season off again. Um, that's absolutely... That. What What is the Maguire news? What What's people talk talking about? I'd, I'd, I'd be a better interim than Carrick. Um, not even joking. Um, I am joking. But let's have a quick look. Things are blaking while we're live here. Someone talk, someone talk to me about what this Harry Maguire news is because if it's the picture of him being out, um, so basically, Lookhurst is just basically saying that everybody is staying apart from Solskjaer. So they've just sacked Solskjaer absolutely disgraceful this story about him refusing to hire better coaches seems like a post facto hit job by the board why are the players not putting pressure on the management through their agents to hire a good coach says add why and if we get yeah but you know what that that is spin that doesn't even make sense so Solskjaer could have appointed better coaches but refused to but then the board refused to sack the coaches that they offered to replace doesn't make any sense you know this is the, this is it with United they'll try and spin something but their spin doesn't make any sense so Solskjaer was offered better coaches and could have got rid of Carrick and McKenna. 
the club get rid of Solskjaer but keep Carrick and McKenna, but then put a story out that they, they offered to replace Carrick and McKenna. They, they, they get lost in their own spin. Uh, madness. Uh, can we get Graham Potter, says Shisha? I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't say no to Potter over what we've got at the moment. I think it's going to be very interesting to see how it it it, it works. But uh, I am doing a watch along at two o'clock for Man City against Everton on that's football definitely. Yeah, so I'll see you on there for that. But um, yeah, the only thing just to, just people are saying what's the Harry Maguire thing. The only thing I know about Harry Maguire is that he was out celebrating his dad's birthday last night, which he's got every right to do. But again, it's about you know you you. you, you what he does in his private life and what he does for England that's up to him you're going to get scrutinised you're a Manchester United footballer and you're a captain and they've just sacked the manager and you got sent off so what you do on the evening of that game is up to you and you've got a face that some people will say it's not that deep and some people will say what you're doing that's just the way it is you can't cry victim you know if you go and have pictures of yourself out having a night out on the night that you've been sent off and played dreadful and your manager's been sacked you're going to get some criticism from some people that's just the way the public works I think the more important thing is to focus on the uh, the managerial situation and the managerial situation is this um the, the manager has been sacked so you know the manager has been sacked and that's on the manager uh so, sorry that's on the players as well um but also in relation to Maguire, his performances at manchester united have been terrible i mean there was a story coming out this morning that, that mctominay played injured yesterday and i was like well where's that come from then you know ollie picking a player that's not fit again doesn't surprise me but you know there's this going to be so much coming out now and, and this is what I mean by at least if Solskjaer had gone with Feenan and Carrick and McKenna they'd all be in their WhatsApp group sort of you know and they could share the pain which they should be sharing the pain but Ollie's now out there on his own isn't he so you know I think it's harsh the way that uh, they've, they've, they've done him in the end um But, you know, we're just going to see, you know, we're actually going to see Solskjaer just thrown to the wolves now. Um, and you know, things are coming out about his training. Um, just be very, you know, just be very open minded. Um about how this plays out now because you know we're going to get players were fed up with Solskjaer's coaching the coaching was archaic it was too British it was this it was that the same coaches are there so we're going to get Solskjaer blamed for coaching and yet the same coaches are still there just just, just keep that in your head because that's where I am this morning the coaches are still there and yet Solskjaer has been criticised this morning because of his coaching and yet Solskjaer didn't do the coaching spin 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 anyway look i'll be on that's football at two o'clock for the manchester united versus not manchester city versus everton watch along obviously we'll go live if there's any developments around new recruits uh mark this season is a write-off now with cole carrick interim manager we need to be putting in a manager and backroom staff in now says Kashif. and so all the glazers have done is cut the crust of the sandwich but the feeling of carrick and mckenna is still there says daddy what a lovely analogy that is make sure you smash a like on the video and subscribe i'm gonna get a bit of lunch and then we will see you on that's football at two o'clock for man city everton and tonight we'll probably do a longer show so we might be live at seven till nine tonight a bigger show with the crew it's the sunday night forum and obviously, if anything that happens in between, we'll go live. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Good show this morning. Let's see what happens later. But look, I would really urge, if there are any fan groups out there that want to make real change around the club, maybe now is the time to do something. The way they've treated Solskjaer is a disgrace. The way they're running the football club is a disgrace. And they've basically written the season off in November. Like There needs to be more action taken against the Woodwards and the Glazers of this football club. Thank you very much. Speak to you in a bit.